everybody, welcome back to The Hunt. I'm Trish Hunt, your host, and um, I'm so excited to have um, our next guest with us today. Um, his name is Mike Hess. He is the co-founder, proprietor, and chief brewing officer of Mike Hess Brewing Company. Mike, welcome to the show. It's so good to see you. Thanks, great to see you. Thank you, so let's start out co-founder. Yeah, uh, my wife and Linda, uh, my wife Linda and I started the company in uh, 2010 after uh, like about three or four months of exploration starting in late 2009 and then going through all the paperwork drill and finding a space and putting a brewery together. But really it starts, this is a fascinating, I think, story because you were in the financial services industry right. and you had a hobby and a passion for brewing beer out of your garage, Yep. right? And yep. then what happened? Tell us about that. Well, it was the garage and the kitchen and one of the restrooms <laughs> in the house. And, uh, so she's trying to make spaghetti and you're making pasta? Yeah, I got the yeah. yeast stir plate going on in the counter and she's always like, what's that clicking sound? And it's the stir plate, you know, propping up yeast and things oh, like that. Yeah. that we, and we, I mean, it, it was a hobby that had gone wild. I started brewing in 1995, and uh, in uh, 2009, I'd read this article in the Wall Street Journal about doing this thing called nano brewing, which was this new concept that nobody had ever heard of, except for apparently the Wall Street Journal and a few people up in like Portland. And um, and that's what the article was talking about. And it was the idea that you could open up a side gig, side hustle brewery, be a one man band, and uh, and have a commercial enterprise. And I, as an entrepreneur. Um, I thought this is really a cool proof of concept type of thing that I could do. I was making a lot of beer. I was as a homebrewer, was pretty prolific. Let's say homebrewer. Okay. And um, I so just what was happening? Were your friends coming over, oh. taste testing? <clears throat> yeah, all my friends. Okay. Um, we we so we owned a house out in East County. It was a big place. We could host uh, you know 100 people easily at the house. And uh, out in the garage, I had a converted cooler that that held uh, I don't know anywhere from like six to ten beers on at the time. Oh and um, and then I also was brewing for a group that I belonged to through my church that was called Hoagies and Stogies, where these uh, fellows would get together and we'd debate some theological topic, and most of the topics were, uh, to me, seemed like two sides of the same coin, uh, uh, where I was like, I don't really understand the difference between these, but there's great food and, and my beer was there, and so I'd have this opportunity to drain the tanks frequently oh so goodness. I could keep brewing. So I think that's one of the hardest parts, being a... Homebrew is like where you can get rid of all this beer, especially when you're making that much. No, absolutely. And so you, it's self-taught. You self-taught. Yeah, this was um, you know pre-internet. Uh, so I got the standard Charlie Papazian book, you know, like the complete joy of homebrewing, <laughs> and uh, would talk to the fellas at the homebrew shop. You know, I remember I started in Philly. I was stationed on a ship there, and uh, I would go down there and have the guy try my beer and give me feedback. You know, like why am I tasting this or smelling that? And uh, yeah, just trial and error and hundreds and hundreds of batches later, maybe thousands, I don't know, we opened up the brewery. Such a cool story. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is San Diego sometimes, so just for the viewers, um, we're, we're filming out of, broadcasting out of uh, Carlsbad, California, and uh, so we're in San Diego, um, but it is often called the brewing capital of the, of the country. Yeah, craft beer capital. Yep. yep. So yeah. how has the industry changed from when you started, even in 95, to then 2008 and then beyond? Well, in, in 95, homebrewing has, was not uh, very long legal. I mean, in, in fact, in some states, uh, Utah, for example, you still couldn't uh, make beer at home uh, back then. Um, but when I got in the industry in 2009, 2010, across the country, there was only about 1,500 breweries total. Now there's oh. nine, no, there's over 10,000 today. California, there were probably 300 breweries. Now there's 11 or 1,200 breweries. So the, uh, the popularity of, of home brewing and the rise of craft beer has caused this, you know, this hockey stick. Um, of participants coming yeah. into the marketplace. And it's changed a lot just in the last 12 years. We were the 33rd brewery in San Diego County. There's 165 mm -hmm. now. Um, and, and back then, everybody knew each other because there was only 30 of us, let's say, right? We all knew yeah. everybody else's setup. We all knew the brewers or the owners. And now there's so many people who say, have you been to such and such and such and such? And I'm like, I haven't even heard of those guys. I had a guy ask me last night if I knew this brewery up in Vista, I'd never heard of them. Oh my gosh, but at small industry, you guys support each other, help each other out? Yeah, we do have, um, we have a local guild in San Diego and we also have a state um, uh, guild that, that really protects the industry. Their job is to, um, at least at the state level, is to protect, to protect our rights legally as brewers. And California, it turns out it's a great state to make beer in. We have lots of privileges that other states don't have in terms of self-distribution, selling pints, selling beer to go, selling six packs out of our own brewery locations. So the retail end of our business is 
very well protected. We also have the right to self-distribute if you so choose. Oh, great. Um, so you don't have to sign up with, uh, you know, one of the big distributors or even a small distributor if you wanted to self-distribute. It's it adds a whole layer of complexity to the to the business if you go that route, but you have the rights to do that here in this state. And so let's talk about your locations because in COVID and how maybe COVID impacted the business model at all. But I think with the flexibility that California offers, you had a lot of different ways to distribute and market. Yeah, um, California was one of the first that allowed us to do like pints to go. So, I mean, we did that immediately. Well, we, not immediately. I would say that it, at the beginning of COVID, it was actually quite frightening. I thought that maybe we were going to lose the business after 10 years of oh effort. And we had at the time probably 75 employees on the team. And um, we kind of had seen it coming. So we had, I'd had all my department managers do kind of like rack and stack employees, like, uh, you know, who's mission critical and who is it that we can, if we have to go down this path of like sheltering in place, uh, who do we say, okay, we're gonna have to go on unemployment. Um, so we had that all prepped. And so when it actually happened in mid-March, we, we actually enacted this plan that I had, had never thought we would have to. There's been some really difficult times through yeah. COVID. Um, uh, in the brewing industry for sure. But we, uh, we closed down for about a week and then during that week I realized that there was this hand sanitizer shortage and we pivoted into hand sanitizer um, and that saved the business. True entrepreneur entrepreneurialism. Yeah, <laughs> for work. sure. My um, we would, we, cause yeah. we would, you know, we, the first question you ask is how much cash do we have on hand and how long can we go? Yep, right? absolutely. And this was before, you know, rent deferments and all those types of things, which we actually never ended up taking. Um, and within about two mm -hmm. weeks of essentially furloughing 80% of the staff, we brought everybody back oh my God. and did hand sanitizer out of our tasting room in North Park. Oh yeah, gosh, what so a great story. It was pretty wild. But then once California started to see a little bit of daylight um, and they, they did pass some um, emergency measures to allow us to sell beer to go, essentially, like you could even sell a glass of beer to go out the door, um, <laughs> those types of things. And we have lots of great outdoor spaces, mm -hmm. um, just, you know, we like outdoor spaces and those actually work to our advantage. So we were able to make it through. How many locations do you guys have now? We have six locations and one underway. So it's, it's, awesome. it, that has, our model has definitely changed. The model when I opened up the uh, business in 2010, or at least what I thought, well, in 2010 when I opened up, the, the model was we're gonna be a nano brewery. We had no designs and never growing outside of our 800 square foot and me making beer 50 gallons at a time. But that, that, that just proved unsustainable. <laughs> I mean, from a proof of concept standpoint, could you do it? Yeah, could you make some money? Sure, a little bit, probably not enough to uh, live in San Diego and buy a home here, um, but it was fun. Um, and it was about a year into it, we decided, Linda and I, that we were gonna try and scale up and, and do what we, we did. But the idea was that we were gonna build a big brewery and then distribute, at least on the Western states. Uh, but that model changed as all these breweries came into market. And it was much harder to be relevant in a market right. like Denver or Phoenix when Denver and Phoenix had great breweries of their own. So what do you think makes Hess Brewery special like how, how have you been able to sustain over such a long period of time i think um well we, we are making great beer i mean that's evidenced by um you know the awards yeah. that we've garnered we've got two world beer cups and many many awards from san diego and the los angeles beer competition so we've got that part down i don't mm. want to say down but I mean, we do a good job at making a great product but um we have um uh an excellent team i mean our and we hire a lot on culture in in 20 mm. 12, when we were hiring for our first big build out, the North Park Brewery, we would talk to people about what they knew about beer. And say, you know, tell us the difference between the ale and the lager and what are your favorite hops and, and those types of things. And now we don't care about that. We care about people who are good people, people. So we right, talk- so you're a nice place to work too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure innovation is a, is a big um, thing, like constantly coming out with new Beers. Yeah, well, you, that's yeah, that's the name of the game in the, in the beer world. You got to always have something new on draft, and so and we have the capacity in the brewers to be able to to continue to keep the taps fresh. So, if somebody comes in, you know, regularly, let's say you know, they come in a, every couple of few weeks, yep. there's probably something new on on there besides their standbys that they love. So fun! And now you also parlayed into festivals. You have yep. Hess Fest yep. coming up, right? So yeah. you want to talk about that? Sure. Hess Fest is our um, our anniversary party. Um, we started it once we opened up the North Park location because we had now a spot to do it in. And um, it, it originally started as a beer festival, which was the standard San Diego thing where you get 20 or 30 craft breweries yep. and you had a stage for some music and then uh, vendors selling, you know, wares and foods and things like that. And it was, and we always have had it with a philanthropic 
um, stance. So we're raising money for some charity or charities. Um, recently though, and I think the way it's gonna look going forward is that it, instead of it being a beer festival with music, it's a music festival with our beer. Because we, okay. we now can draw enough people to sell the tickets along with the bands. Yeah, I actually had the pleasure of going to one, I think last summer, so it was great. Yeah. So tell, tell, if, tell the viewers where they can find you and uh, more about Hess Brewing. Uh, well, we're on, on all the socials, of course. So Mike Hess Brewing is our handle for Twitter. It's our uh, Instagram. It's our Facebook. You know, all that stuff. Uh, website, MikeHessBrewing.com. And we've got five locations here in the San Diego area and one up in the Bay Area. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Mike. Great to have you. Thank we'll you. be back in a minute.